hours of the regular show on Terrestrial Radio, and you wanted a little bit more, so that's why you found the Gun Talk After Show podcast, where we saved all the best things that we can't say on regular radio. Now here's Tom, Michelle, and Jim for the Gun Talk After Show. All right, we're in the after show portion where we have uh, Jim and Michelle joining us. And Michelle, uh, you've been helping everybody out. It's kind of like I'm thinking, well, you know, it's great because they're already prepped. Their questions have been answered by the time they get to me. Well, I try not to answer them all the way there's still a radio program. I mean. (laughs) (laughs) Drop security. (laughs) No. I'm just going to start saying, well, I'm just going to start saying, well, what did Michelle say? There's very specific (laughs) questions that have to be asked so you can answer them appropriately. Yeah. So this is true. It's part of the screening. That is part of the screening. That's right. And I appreciate that. And then, you know, over there, we're going, uh, Michelle, I know you're enjoying talking with people, but uh, we're working over here. <laughs> Trying to get a show. <laughs> no, you, w- once you had the guy with that had all the 327 federal guns, you were oh, done, man. It was all over at that man. point. Man, it was funny because Jim and I had just spoke moments before that about the fact that we are desiring a 327 <laughs> lever action firearm. <laughs> Are you now? <laughs> and then he calls in. And it's like, oh, which one did you get? You got the steel boy? Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. I got to go talk to uh, Tony on one. He's out of Marshall, Texas, because he's got uh, one of my favorite rifles. Hey, Tony. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. What you got? Well, uh, a buddy of mine was telling me about 708, 7 millimeter 08. Mm-hmm. and was telling me what a good round it was. Well, I found a Star Pro Hunter, oh. one of them swirly barrel guns, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, took it home, cleaned the barrel. It was a used gun, cleaned the barrel real good, took the stock off. A couple of issues, like the rings was loose, and okay, that's why the guy got rid of it because he couldn't group. Well, anyway, <laughs> put my rings and on So it. you got a deal on it, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, of course, uh, I had a scope sitting around. I put a scope on it mm-hmm. and went to the local gun shop here in town and picked up three boxes of uh, Hornady whitetail ammo, just 139 grain, mm-hmm. uh, the interlock. Right. Well, I wanted to keep it all the same lot number. Okay. Well, it shoots under a minute of angle real mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. And decided, okay, that's going to be my deer gun this year. Okay. Well, I bagged three deer, and yeah. they it uh, the round. I've shot three oh eights a lot, mm-hmm. but this round just I don't know if it's the the interlock, the, like the core lock bonded bullet, but it would go through, and they didn't go far. Well, I but the am recoil a, is light. That, that's and, a, and, and that's just what the say. guy was. You got a little bit less recoil than a three oh eight. It shoots a little bit flatter. And past about 200 yards, it's hitting harder than a 308. I think, if I remember the uh, ballistics on it, it's just. I I tell you, I love the 7 mm 8 I think it is one of the best all-around hunting calibers out there. I mean, I don't care if it's deer or antelope or elk or moose or whatever. I would hunt any of that with a 7 mm 8 Yeah, I'm 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 well pleased with it. But just a reminder. I'm the guy that had the hundred year old model twelve. Uh-huh. Okay. So how long and are you gonna the keep this? Three thirty eight aught six. Yeah. I'd called you earlier, you said you'd shot a kudu over in Africa with one. Uh yes. With a three thirty eight, but not but, a three thirty eight aught six, yes. Right. But yeah. But anyway, no, I just wanted to call in and just tell them that, man, this tire is, it's a, it's a sweet gun. The action's real smooth in it. Oh, yeah. They make good stuff. You know, and the other thing is when you find a, a gun that somebody can't shoot cause, and then you realize it's the the rings are loose, that's a win-win because, man, he wants to get rid of it, and you realize that you can make it shoot as soon as you get a hold of it. So that's that's one of the best deals ever. I would just yeah, say, t- Tony, well done. Excellent. And look, I appreciate the range report, sir. Let me scoot down to Frank. He's in uh, Arnett, Oklahoma. Frank, what are you looking for? Uh, night sights for my 1911, especially my Ruger or Remington. I know the dovetails would be different, but uh-huh. I was also thinking about a night sight that w- would be, uh, you know, like a target adjustable rear sight. Right, right. Um, there are a number of companies that are making, uh, you know, you're looking for a night sight that has the, uh, tritium vials in it that glow in the dark. Yeah, that, that's what I was looking at was thinking that was what 
I need to look at, but that was one of the questions is, was the tritium the right one, or is there a different stuff that's better, well, you know? So that's, well, first of all, uh, Trigicon, who makes the great uh, ACOG scopes, they also have uh, night sights available. But let's back up a little bit. Why are you looking for night sights? What are you going to be doing with this? Uh, self-defense uh, and uh, as much as anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just, and also being able to acquire my sights quicker. Well, they will not help you acquire your sights quicker in daylight. Only in very, very low light will you be able to see these things glow. If you've got much light at all, if you can see the iron sights, you're going to use the iron sights. The glowing sights are not going to do much for you. But if it's seriously dark, then that's when they really help out. Um, well, that's and, what I was talking about. Okay, yeah. I, w- I would take a look at the uh, the tritium, uh, the uh, trigicon, rather. Trigicon night sights. Now, there's some others, uh, Michelle's at Meprolite and some others. Uh, yeah, and even, you know, if you're looking at acquisition of the sights, maybe just the fiber optic sights. Well, yes. If you're going to be having any light out there in daylight or anything, I, I agree. I think a fiber optic front sight might be a, an option for you. Right. And True Glow does make one. Is it the TFO, I think, is the model? I think that's it, yeah. That is the uh, tritium and the fiber optic. Yeah, so. TFO, oh, that's right. yeah. tritium and fiber optic combo, but you do have to know the dovetail size to get the appropriate sights. That's why we have super glue. Doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. That brand was what? True Glow. T R U G L O. Okay. Okay. I can. I. I wasn't thinking. I'll just listen to the podcast if I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. That'll. You know. You should be able to find something that works for you. Now, uh, one other way to go, just throwing out options here, because I do like the um, fiber optic as well. The XS Sights system mm-hmm. is pretty nice. You can put a big old dot on the front. Uh, it's it's kind of like a small golf ball almost. And, man, you can pick that thing up quickly in really low light. And so that's a possibility, too. So you, you really have some options. Yeah, okay. That's why I called you. <laughs> 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 Well, we may have just confused you at this point. I don't know if we helped at all. Well, I can. I, I've got enough 1911s. I can try one on each one. <laughs> oh, now that's a man after my own heart, right there. Now I'll buy them all. <laughs> Way to go, Frank! You win, man. <laughs> all right, thank all you. Right, take care. Uh, uh, Michelle, that's the guy you want to see walking into the store. <laughs> right? I will try one of these for this one. And <laughs> that's right. <laughs> what so flavor how, color do you have? That's right. How many guns do you have? Okay, we can get you a different color for each one. <laughs> it is amazing how big of a difference those fiber optic sights make, which most yes. most companies put those on their firearms anymore. Mm-hmm. But uh, it, it, it's huge, and you can get the yellow and the orange or green and yellow mm-hmm. or whatever combination to uh, to allow for that quick acquisition. But Right. I mean, you can get those. I'm looking. Uh, I mean, you can get them at Brown L's. If you want to do your own gunsmithing, you can do them there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you do not, just so people understand, make sure you get the right fit and don't go pounding on uh, sights to slide them in. You need a sight pusher. It's a tool. Yep. Uh, otherwise, you're going to beat it up and scar your gun. If you don't have that, just go to your local gunsmith or gun store and let them install them. Buy them there. Don't like buy them, you know, save five bucks online and then take them to the store and have them install them. Go ahead and spend the money at the store. Let them make some money and use their services. There you go. I agree. Yeah, well, I th- I, somehow <laughs> I thought you might. <laughs> Did Jim go to sleep over there? Is he? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we worked him too hard during this show. Sleep apnea? I never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Tell you what, let's take a quick break. I'm going to come back, and uh, Michelle wants to take issue with something I said again. No. <laughs> we'll be right back. It's America's favorite 22 rifle. No matter how, where, or what you like to shoot, there's a Ruger 1022 for you. From the carbine to the incredible takedown models, the tactical and target versions, all Ruger 1022 models have a legendary action and detachable 10 round rotary magazine. Whether you're hunting squirrels or tin cans, there's a lifetime of fun in every Ruger 1022 rifle. See them all at Ruger.com. 
That's Ruger.com. Want your next gun purchase to be fast and hassle-free? Well, at galleryofguns.com, you can search through thousands of models from our huge firearms inventory. Find a great offer from a local dealer that includes all fees and taxes. And there's no need to arrange a transfer. Gallery of Guns takes a small deposit on your credit card, and your gun will be at your chosen dealer in as little as 48 hours. Plus, your gun will be covered by our guaranteed lifetime replacement warranty. Galleryofguns.com. Search, find, buy. It really is just that easy. I know that there was something that happened earlier in the show today where G- Jim was trying to separate us because he's seen <laughs> you guys knock it off. So what was it we were talking about anyway? Let, let's see. It was, if I recall. <laughs> and you no. probably wrote it down. <laughs> I, yeah, I took notes. Of course. <laughs> no, we okay. had a gentleman that had called in with an inside the waist <gasps> oh, band right. holster. Right, right, right. And he was thinking perhaps it was because of his belt that it was being pushed off. And we were thinking that maybe it was because the clip didn't fit appropriately or mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. was a plastic clip, which wouldn't allow good contact. But, yeah, so that was the discussion. So, so and you were saying that the, wait a minute, the clip didn't matter or the belt didn't matter because it was inside the waistband or something Well, like if that. you wear it, there's several different types of holsters. And some of the clips are designed to go over a belt and some mm-hmm. you don't need a belt for at all. So you're relying ah. on the rigidity of the pants that you're wearing to keep it close to your body. Okay. So the question becomes, do you actually have to have a belt or do you just need well-fitting clothing? Because we have come across situations where people are like, oh, this holster doesn't work. Ideally, you don't want a holster that collapses, right? You want a Kydex right. or a well-made leather. Right. Correct. So sometimes people buy these inexpensive holsters that collapse when you they're, they're basically socks yeah it's or a just a, a simple suede or mm-hmm. y- yeah different if, styles yeah, yeah if the mouth doesn't stay open when you take the gun out while it's in your inside the waistband it's not a good holster right from or, my standpoint or sometimes they cinch a belt up so tight you're not yeah. going to be able to pull the now, gun from now the holster. having said that there's also the the little what it, neoprene style sometimes you carry a small gun and you're not going to reholster anyway and you can stick those things in a lot of different uh, positions on your belt mm-hmm. so you know i'm not i don't want to tell people look you know if, if it collapses it's no good it right. just depends you know it's like everything else it all depends on the situation right how you want to carry where you're carrying what gun you're carrying but in, in generally speaking, those are mm-hmm. the things that you take into consideration. Because, of course, you know, they make these that are tuckable. Tuckable doesn't mean anything except for the fact that you can tuck a shirt in around it. So you right. look clean and presentable right? without having any indication that you have a firearm and holster with you. But right. And then crossbreed and alien gear are two of those. But there are a lot of manufacturers now have tuckable uh, styles in their holsters, right? Right, right. And I guess what I always look for uh, in a holster is how deep of a seat do you get with a firearm? And obviously, the pants that you wear, like women especially, like to wear these low-rise pants, and there's not enough material there to properly mm-hmm. hold the gun. So awesome. you would rely you I would knew rely you were going to go the there. I just think of the app. Yeah, Jim, just wait for it. Yeah, Here I thought comes. he was still asleep. <laughs> Mr. Inappropriate just shows up at the right time. It's a trigger word go. woke me up. Uh, sorry. A trigger word? What? Yeah. It's gun talk. Trigger, perfect. Yeah, see? Perfect. Nice segue. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well done. So, okay. So... Yes, if you've got uh, little skinny uh, spandex type pants on and no belt, you got nowhere to put this thing. That's why they invented duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> we seem to be having an issue with duct tape several shows in a row here. <laughs> Talk to them about sponsorship. We need GT tape. <laughs> you, you, know, you know the rule, right? If you can't fix it with duct tape, you're not using it, enough duct it tape. Can't be fixed, right? <laughs> it's tight. More duct tape. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, but you know you're right. It's um, it, once again we go back to the difficulty of carrying when you're a woman. If you want to wear your stylish clothing, which many times there's no belt at all on his pants. I mean, a lot of the women I know who are serious gun people, they just wear jeans now. That's pretty much what they wear all the time with a belt. Right. Right. You know, they just kind of change the way. It's like you know, I, I change the way I dress when I'm carrying. I, I am not a wear your shirt out kind of guy generally, 
But I've gotten to that because it sure makes uh, concealment a lot easier. Well, and it does always come back to the fact that it's got to be a rock-solid support system. So if you get that because you have a nice tactical webbed belt or reinforced belt, then that's what's that's what gives you that support and you're done. You mm-hmm. don't have to worry about it. You don't have to think about it. So mm-hmm. it's not that I disagree. It's just that there are it's times. Just that I'm wrong. No, okay, no, no, no. Okay. There's just, <laughs> there's some holsters out there that work better that you don't right. have to rely on a belt for at all. And let me, let me touch on something because we, we talked about having a holster that stays open. Yes. If you've got a little pocket holster and it's in one of these little neoprene pouches and then you, you know, tuck it into a, either your pocket or inside your waistband, that's one thing. But if you're, this is your, and I'm not sure exactly how to put this, but if I'm carrying a little bit bigger gun, I want a holster that I can reholster with one hand. If you have to hold your holster, the mouth of your holster open with one hand while you put the gun in with the other hand, to me, that doesn't work because I need to be able to holster my gun with one hand if, if necessary. Why would you want to put your hand anywhere near the muzzle to do that? Well, how else are you going to find out if it's loaded? Look down it like I always do. <sighs> That's why we carry a flashlight. See, I just put iridescent nail polish on the tip of every bullet. That way I can just look down the, the glow, barrel. The glow in the dark. That way you can shine the light down the barrel. Yep. Then it starts glowing. Then you can look down the barrel to see if it's actually a bullet in there. Oh, gosh. Wow. <laughs> what could go wrong? Good good safety tips here, guys. Sure. Not a problem. We're, we're here to help anytime. That's right. Call us at 1-800-LAWSUIT. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> just joking, Jeez. everybody, for the record. Just joking. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, along with that, too, Tom, we talk Just. about about changing with the seasons. And, of course, we're getting into winter and we're getting into heavier clothing here in the north. Um, although it's 50 degrees today, you wouldn't know it was going to be winter. <laughs> rub it in. Rub it in while we can. <laughs> but, you know, I think this is one of those times to rediscuss. And I say it should be like a two-week carry, not that there has to be 14 days. But if you give yourself 10 to 14 days or maybe 20 days or whatever it is, when you change your holster, your body has to adapt to that new feel, to how everything is. And you actually have to practice pulling Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the gun from the holster all over again, getting the shirt or the coat or the gloves. It's it's just different. Yes. Yeah, everything feels different. Everything out of the way. And and you do need to practice, okay, uh, I will tell you these, uh, I was delighted to hear that the fleece vest is back. Uh, so, because a fleece vest is a great concealment garment. You can wear that underneath a regular coat and continue to wear it inside. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that just works really well. But you're right. You have to practice, okay, how do I draw when I'm wearing this vest? How do I draw when I'm wearing a coat? How do I get to it? Um, you know, on and on and on. And you got to be able to do those practices with an empty gun in a safe environment. I don't know. It just it's none of this stuff is easy, nor is it simple. Mm-mm. Yeah, new holsters feel different. They, you know, you carry them in different positions. Perhaps you know when you look at your belt buckle as the front is a twelve o'clock. You know, some people carry it three. Some people carry it the appendix, which is more you know one two o'clock area. Just. Everything changes, so mm-hmm. you got to give it time, get used to the wear before you decide it doesn't work. Just be patient. All right, let's take a quick break, and when we come back, I want to talk about the idea of purses for men as well as women, the, the purse or man purse for guns. If you're like me, you don't have money to burn, but you still want to buy guns, ammo, and accessories. That's why we created Gun Dealio. That's a free, yes, a free smartphone app. Just download it and start getting the deals. Could be discounts, offers of free magazines for your gun, or you could be the first to hear about new stuff from gun makers. Here's how it works. With Gun Dealio on your phone, you get alerts when you enter a gun store. Special deals, you know. You don't have to do a thing. It'll do a lot of other cool things, like let you watch gun videos and listen to Gun Talk podcast. Plus, check it anytime for hundreds of deals and offers. Getting more while spending less. Smart, huh? Gun Dealio. Made in America. 
gluten-free at the App Store and Google Play or Gundelio.com. All right, I, uh, I threw out the idea of the man first, and really I'm thinking about uh, what probably started to get popularized by Maxpedition, where you have these uh, single sling uh, over across the chest bags, messenger bags, if you will. Mm-hmm. There are a ton of those out there made specifically for concealed carry, aren't there? Yes, Tom. Just go ahead and buy a purse. Just do it. <laughs> I, I, I could rock a purse. I'm just going to tell you right you now, okay? <laughs> no, but I, there are If I'm going to do that, I'm going bright color, too. I'm not hiding a darn well, thing. Something in a few should be nice. Paisley, Two maybe? Shot. Paisley. <laughs> Paisley. <laughs> Hey, Whoa. I'm sure it's out there. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Uh, but yeah, if you get the uh, the tactical ones, you got black and you have black. Mm-hmm. Uh, you might sneak up on a flat, dark earth one. F D E. Sandstone. I carry a person a heartbeat. Except the problem is, I don't, I don't want it off my body. Well, there is that. Uh, but there are times and places where. Having that little messenger bag rig might not be bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, there, there's no single solution we've talked no, about. No, there that, isn't. Yeah. It's, it's why we got all this different stuff. Um, I was having a conversation with uh, Greg Lappin from the Vata Group, a really good trainer, uh, a couple of days ago about ARs for self-defense. And he said, yeah, he says, you know, if there's a, a situation that's going down, he says, people say, well, you know, I will go to my vehicle and I'll get my AR. He says, no, you won't. So that's not going to happen. If you're out somewhere and there's a shooting and all, you're going to use what you got on you, and that's what you're going to finish it with. He says, but if you're in your vehicle or you're right next to your vehicle and you can get your AR out, you know, and somebody's shooting up a school, you're much better off with an AR. So the whole idea of, you know, and I was talking about the other idea of you could carry an AR and a messenger bag. He says, yeah, you know, I mean, honestly, it's why we carry pistols is because we can. We can get away with that, but that's pretty much all we can get away with, really. Mm-hmm. Well, don't you think that makes a great resource for a secondary firearm, if nothing else? You oh, know, yes. Your extra magazines, you know, a secondary gun, whether, and some people carry two of the same. That way they mm-hmm. don't even have to think about it. And right. that's, that's quite all right. You know, Nothing whatever makes it simple, right? Yeah. That's a New York mag swap. Is that what they call that? Yeah, New York reload. Uh, I am, I will tell you from doing tons of this force on force stuff, you need a lot more ammo than you think you're going to need. In a gunfight, you're going to shoot six times before you know you've practically pulled a trigger. I mean, you're going to rip, bang, 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 bang. And then you're going to go, oh, whoa, you know. But it's the whole idea of, you know, we used to talk about having a revolver. And, you know, revolvers are great tools. But I I would have a revolver as a backup gun, but I would not have revolvers as my primary. It, there's, and I honestly, unless I'm just absolutely forced to it, I don't want a little single stack gun either. I, I want something where I have... A dozen rounds at least in my primary gun. That makes Just total sense, yeah. I mean, better to have 12 and need two than need eight and have six. Well, and my point is you're not going to shoot two. You're right. going to shoot six. Right. Uh, and that's what we find in all of these is that when somebody is, you know, when you're engaged like that, you're going to shoot a lot. It's what people do. And they, even when they didn't plan on it, even when they didn't anticipate or if they said, you know, I won't, I know I only have five rounds in this revolver. And then you go, it's like, bang, 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 bang. Oh, wow. I'm out. Yes. Because, you know, you got all those off before the guy hardly even knew you'd getting, gotten hit. Right. Can I ask you a question since you've done a lot of this type of training? Mm-hmm. Do they ever teach you in the in the chance that you should get into some sort of a street fight or a home invasion, do they ever teach you to count as you shoot? Yes. The schools that don't know what the hell they're talking about, mm-hmm. they, they will tell you to count your rounds. Right. There are even ones that in the old days that if you ran out of ammo, if you shot your gun dry, there was a punishment for anybody in the class that ran their gun dry because you're supposed to shot, stop shooting and do a reload before you run your gun dry. That's just dumb. You're going to shoot your gun dry or you're not, but it doesn't matter because you're not going to count rounds. Right. If you're counting rounds, you're, you're not thinking about what you need to the be thinking. You're not engaged. Exactly. Yeah. The concentration isn't where it needs to I, I just bring that question up to you and ask that because a lot of people think that it's necessary. How many rounds did you shoot? They think that that is the question they're going to be asked. Well, and they are. 
if, if you have an idea. I just thought of a cool product. We should try, we should patent this one. Okay, you know there's little red dot sights you put on your pistols that everybody's going with now? It's a computer in there. And you could program it with how many rounds you have. And as you shoot each time, it displays the countdown of the number of rounds you have left in your gun. So you're looking through your sight, and it's saying seven, six, five, four, three, two. And you'd know how many rounds. Mm. Uh, now, you really are thinking, oh, do I look at the bad guy, or do I look at my countdown timer? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Okay, we'll throw that on the pile of ideas gone bad, <laughs> or ideas that never should have been brought up in the first place. <laughs> but no, it's, it's a great question. I, I, people say, you know, well, you can count your rounds. <sighs> people don't see their sights, much less count their rounds. Right. Well, just in case you're curious, Tom, you can buy the name roundcounter.com. Um, it's on sale this week for $1,488. Round counter. Yeah, round counter. I thought I'd go, go snag that right away. But I thought I, I would go with red dot round countdown device thingy. <laughs> dot com. com. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, grab, grab dot org before somebody else does, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. I, I will tell you, though. From all this stuff, I've, I've learned so much from doing all this force on force. Uh, and we're just watching what people really do, and they generally don't use their sights much. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we put a laser on it, it's a game changer. It's mm-hmm. to- you can't believe how accurate people get with this stuff. Uh, we, this lady, you'll see it in the videos, this lady we had in the uh, range was brand new to pistols. So she had shot rifles a fair amount. But, I mean, she is basically throwing rounds all over over the place with iron sights and when we turned the laser on she started shooting groups you could cover with two hands in a dynamic situation wow i mean it was like holy she knew how to pull the trigger she just didn't understand the whole uh lining up the sights and staying on the sights while you're doing all this which is difficult uh but you don't have to explain anything with a laser put the dot where you want the bullet to go and pull the trigger Press, it's just press, not hard. Press the trigger. I like I, I like to say yank. I, that's why I do the two-handed grip. That way you can put two fingers inside of the trigger guard. You yank really hard, yeah. Yes, because the bullet goes faster the harder you yank it. <laughs> <laughs> and they go more awry, too. <laughs> I call it pumpernickel. Or, or pumpernickel. Oh, you yeah, beat me to it. I, get a I was early. trying to get in there before Jim did. <laughs> Gosh, I'm so proud of you guys for being there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're here for you. Don't you wish we would go away? Yeah. Don't ever throw up a softball like that and expect not one of us to smash it. <laughs> oh, my. That was awful, actually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's why we like it so I'd, much. I'd like to say it gets better from here, but I'm a pretty truthful kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's, it's, as I said, it only goes downhill from here, and that's shocking since you already thought you were at the bottom. Right. So there one, it is. One man's low is, yeah. Something. I don't know. Toward the end of the show, I had to throw that out because I know that both of you guys do a lot of philanthropic stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking about that whole idea of the time of year when people start feeling about that and just, you know, Having a thing to do like that just adds an element of purpose to your life, I think. And I just thought I'd chunk it out there. Yeah, I, I what I find, I guess I'm I'm selfish. I mean, I do stuff to help other people, but I end up beaming from it. So it's almost it's it's a dual fold. I, I'm genuinely trying to help other people, but I it doesn't cost me anything. There's there's no you get a lot out of it. Yeah, I get a lot out of it, and it's just incentive well, you, to do it again. Well, you put a lot of time in. I mean, you do a lot of work. For these you know, the stuff you do, a lot of people need help. Hopefully, I won't need it, but I'm pretty sure I got a backup team if I do. There's some karma going out there somewhere, and if not, that's okay too. It still yeah. needs to get done. Well, that's it. You know, it's it, that's it. It needs to get done. But I I also think, to your point, is yeah, it's almost a selfish thing. I'm going to do this for others. And maybe it's because of the way it makes me feel or it gives me a purpose. Well, at least the second time, yeah, because the first time you may not even realize that. And then you go, wow, mm-hmm. that, that felt tremendous. I'm going to go do it again. Yeah, well, now, like now are you doing it for you or for them? It doesn't really matter. Hmm. Doesn't matter. Win-win. Mm-hmm. That's it. So anyway, uh, Jim, all right, for next week, I think it's time to resurrect our uh, Santa Claus bumper music. We'll have to pull that out. Okay. So we'll find that and get it out because that one's just, it's an oldie but a goodie. And we'll, uh, we'll dredge that one. That'll be fun. All right. And uh, are you, Michelle, are you seeing the Christmas buying yet or probably maybe this next weekend? 
No, a lot of it has started. You know, people yeah. trying to find. This is always the hardest time of the year to help somebody that comes into our store that wants to buy a firearm as a gift. Ah. Because you really try to persuade them into giving them a gift certificate so they can come back perhaps with you and pick a firearm right. rather than just trying to pick one out yourself because you can basically guarantee that that's not going to go the way you want it to. You <laughs> know, right. I can guarantee you like, that this is not going to work out the oh, way you she's think gonna it's going to. She's going to love it. To. Like, oh, I don't know. What's the experience? No. Well, you know, there's so much to take into consideration. Mm-hmm. How are they going to carry it? What experience? They got to get the trigger time behind them, and, and then just keep building it from there. You know, once they get the firearm, the firearm is just the is just the tool. It, I, you need all the resource information. I, to- I like the idea of giving a gift certificate for a class. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people, if, well, if they're gun people, I think they would respond to that. But even people who are thinking they want to get into it is okay. So give them a, a certificate to an introductory class. Mm-hmm. That would work. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people, you know, family-wise, they want to do something for the whole family. And I think that is the perfect way, you know, basic introductory shooting skill, um, you know, safety. You learn how to open up a gun and and how to know whether it's unloaded. I mean, these are skills that a lot of people in society don't have any idea of how to perform. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, getting a, a basic pistol class through a store even as a family do your whole family good yeah you know take everyone that's kind of cool mm-hmm. you know, so. and there are instructors out there where you, who you could actually book a private lesson yes. with yep. and just do just your family out there doing a private lesson for a full day if you wanted to or a half a day or whatever that would be a cool experience for a family to do and also get the benefit from it right and and you know, don't neglect the fact that there's all these ranges out there that have firearms that you can rent and use while you're there for, you know, the ability to try different guns, different types of recoil. You oh, get the feel for. That's it, why you guys are so angry and I went into the alley and did it. <laughs> that would explain it. <laughs> but it really gives you an indication. Call 911 on Jim again. <laughs> It's really a test drive, so to speak, on the uh, on the firearms. I get a quick question for you, Shell. Mm-hmm. How do you buy a gun for someone anyway when in the 4473 it specifies if you're not buying this for anyone else? It How- asks if you are the actual buyer of the firearm. Right. You are the purchaser of the firearm. And then you have to swear that you're not going to give it to anybody who's... It's prohibited. Uh, yes. Okay, that's the wording? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so... Uh, but no, that's correct. You can buy a gun and then you can gift it to someone as opposed to someone saying, hey, here's you know a couple hundred bucks. Go in that store and buy that gun for me because I can't pass the background check. That's right. a different deal. Right. Yeah, that is a straw purchase. And you will end up in federal prison, right? Go, go to Club Fed. <laughs> A oh, little gonna, bit of money due and, to them. And, and more and more uh, gun stores are really training their employees to recognize and look for that, right? Yes. Yes. That's been on the forefront for many years, and there's been a big push here probably in the last what, two, three years mm-hmm. to uh, really cut down on now, that. Are they stumbling when you ask them questions? Are they on their cell phone before they can give you an answer kind of deal? or? Uh, you get a feel. I don't. It just doesn't feel right. They're not asking questions or like, nope, that's the one. Oh, oh. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, let's or, let's, or, let's. or you got the guy who's standing right next to the woman, and this is what she, she has wants. no idea, <laughs> but he's basically telling her, and you're going, nah. yeah. Yeah. NSSF has that program uh, for gun stores that's called uh, "Don't Lie for the Other Guy." Mm-hmm. Right. And you know, all those store owners out there, and I guess people need to realize this too. If it doesn't feel right, I don't have to sell you a firearm. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Right to refuse service. You absolutely do. Yeah, I said, no, we're just, you know, I'm sorry, but. This is uncomfortable. We need to yeah. do some education. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. We're not going to do this. And if they, and the more they have a hissy fit as a result of that, the, probably the more you reinforce that, yeah, this is probably a good idea to not sell them this. Mm-hmm. If you say, okay, I'll tell you what, you know what? We're not going to do th- this. Uh, we would like for you to take some training beforehand. I mean, I don't know how you handle it, Michelle. There's got to be, I'm sure it's happened in it, the store. It's situational. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's as opposed to scientifical. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's not so scientific. It's no, definitely it really situational. Isn't. Yeah, you can you just kind of, as you say, you just kind of get a feeling. You go, this doesn't feel right. This is just not right. And you got to listen to that little voice inside of you. Cooler head prevails. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. There you go. All right. All right, guys. We'll go out there and uh, you know shop till you drop. And uh, I'm gonna. I think what I need to do is buy some ammo and a purse. Oh, I like Don't forget that. your purse. <laughs> we actually buy purses, and we shoot through them regularly. Mm-hmm. We uh, have women who want to carry in a purse, shove their gun in a purse, and shove it out in front of them and blow a hole through it. There's also the, the whole backpack. We've talked about that before, too. So in, in, a, carry, in a carry case like that, like in a purse situation, mm-hmm. might be better to go the revolver route, No. Well, revolvers will keep working. You can keep pulling the trigger. But if you are using a semi-auto, you might get only one, but you might get two or three, at which point you just yank it out to a tap rack and the gun's back, you know, fix the malfunction, which should take about half, literally half a second. And you're back on target and doing what you need to do. It's, um, you know, there's also an advanced technique where if you've got to do a contact shot, you've got to press a gun up against somebody to shoot them. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, you can actually push this slide out of battery, right. and the gun won't go off. So you put your, if you're shooting right hand, you shove your left hand hard against the back of the slide and ah. pull the trigger that way. Now, it's not going to cycle, so when you come off of them, you're going to have to do a tap rack and do it that way. Right. Uh, now, here's the one that will really blow your mind, because you won't believe it until you try it. You can also do the same thing by just putting your thumb behind the slide. That'll prevent it from... Yes. And people say, well, you'll knock your thumb off. No, actually, you won't, weirdly enough. Huh. Uh, so, I mean, that's what I've heard from people who've tried it. I'm chicken. I'm going to try it with Tom's thumb. I'm thinking, Tom, after the show, let's... Yeah, can I borrow your thumb? Come over here. <laughs> can you give me a five-minute lead time? <laughs> <laughs> you want to get a couple of miles down yeah, the road? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me make sure yeah. I got my ears I, on I'm, so I don't hear you screaming. <laughs> no, officer, I have no knowledge. I was not there when that happened. Yeah, I have no idea these, what they're talking about. These knuckleheads are up to their old tricks again. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> if you're going to try any of this stuff, folks, seriously, do it with a really good instructor who can uh, watch you and make sure you're doing it safely. This is very advanced technique stuff. Well, and this is where you start seeing the performance of the ammunition change, Mm -hmm. too, Mm -hmm. which we've talked about, you know, the different styles of hollow point ammo and the the polymer bullet ammo and all that type of thing. But, uh, you know, depending on your situation, that might help you choose which ammo you're going to carry, too. Okay, and on another note, I want to uh, throw this out there. There has been a recall, and this is serious stuff. Uh, after my fire, I pushed everybody to get a fire extinguishers. Well, Kitty, which is the major supplier of uh, fire extinguishers, has a recall on their fire extinguishers. So if you've gone out and bought a fire extinguisher or more than one for your home in the last few months or even years, check with uh, Kitty, K-I-D-D-E, kitty.com, and there's a link there to check to see if your serial number is part of the recall. So, because what you don't want is a fire extinguisher that doesn't go off when you want it to, kind of like having a gun that doesn't go off when you want it to. Yes. So, there you okay. are. Okay, guys. All right, keep shopping, and next week you have to report on everything that you bought that, that is gun-related. It's going to be a long after show. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, man. All right. Be safe. We will do it again in a week. See you, buddy. Bye. Bye. Well, that wraps up another Gun Talk After Show. But if you want even more gun-related stuff, don't forget to check out Gun Dealio. It's the app for Apple and Android phones that connects you to all the Gun Talk shows, plus even more. And we'll catch you next time for the Gun Talk After Show.